You know, just being reminded, it's so simple, isn't it? But, but just being reminded, God's everything. Like he, he's absolutely everything. And he, he's given everything of himself to us. Um, and actually he, he's jealous to, for us to, he's jealous to have everything of us, just as he's given himself fully uh, in Jesus. He, he wants everything of us. So for example, we sing worship when we gather together on a Sunday. Um, if you were to ask someone, you know, is that the extent of worship? I think most people would say, well, no, it's not. But if we're being honest, in practice, that kind of is. Um, and I think the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment with, with lockdown, with, with the regulations around COVID, um, we're in a place where we've been forced to ask the question, what actually is worship? Um, and, and as I've spent time asking God about this, he's just been reminding me he's everything and he wants everything from us. He doesn't just want our songs. I mean, the songs in and of themselves isn't even what he wants. Music's great. It's a beautiful gift from God. I honestly believe that. I mean, I'm, I'm a worship leader. I love to sing and I love to worship. Um, but if it's, if it, God's not after the songs in themselves. He's after our hearts, isn't he? And I think we're in a really beautiful season where perhaps it's uncomfortable for some people. Um, we have to lay aside what we've been used to doing, uh, but it actually allows us to come to a place where we, it, perhaps in, in more quiet places, in, more, uh, in, in seasons of perhaps more solitude, of we can't fake it anymore, can we? When you're by yourself or when you're with just one or two people, you can't, you can go through the motions, but it very quickly becomes empty. Um, and I think the season we're in is, is enabling us to, to dig back deep down into the reality of, God, I don't want to hide anymore. Like, I don't want to play religion anymore. This, this has to be a heart to heart thing. You gave your heart, the heart of God. I want you to have my heart. I mean, in one sense, it's a simple answer, but it's the same as it always has been. Like, in one sense, nothing's changed. The Father sent the Son, Jesus, and he came to seek and save the lost. He came to those who are far away. He came to call people home. He came to be a manifestation of the love of God. He came to draw people into life and into hope to bring freedom and nothing's changed absolutely nothing has changed but actually in the the current climate that we find ourselves in you know i'm really excited in that uh we can't just leave it up to professional Christians anymore, can we? Leading programs that we might then go along, be encouraged by the ones who are really good at it, and then sort of think that we've ticked a box because we've been around those who are doing it. Um, you know, mission's a lifestyle, isn't it? It's not a program. And, and that's what we're being forced into right now. If, 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 we have to be careful how we talk about mission because I think sometimes we so narrowly define it as evangelism and a very narrow view of what that means. But even just for argument's sake, we think about evangelism and sharing the gospel with people around us. I think the season that we're in, we've been forced to ask the question, is this present in my life or is this not present in my life? Is this part of, am I sharing him with those around me or am I not? Because I can no longer hide behind being a part of a church or an organisation or a group of people who have stories and it's easy when there's people with stories to hide behind their stories or to think we're a part of a church that's growing through addition, therefore the kingdom of God is coming, so therefore I'm a part of it. But we're in a season where we have to ask some really tough questions. I can't hide behind a bigger organisation anymore. Am I seeing the reality of the fruit of the kingdom around me in my life? You know, it, it, it goes without saying, we've, we've, had, we've had so much of what we've known as church stripped away from us in this time. For some of us that's really exciting and that's great, but we have to be real, for many people that's, that's really uncomfortable. And, and it is hard because what we've been so used to has been taken away. I've, I've, I've got a friend out in, uh, in the States, um, her and her family minister in um, Jackson, Mississippi, in downtown, like in one of the roughest, toughest areas. They, they, know what, they know what hard is. Like they've had guns to their heads, they've had bullets through their windows, like as their kids are growing up. Like they know what hard is. 
Miss Amy, my friend, she has this amazing phrase. She says, um, hard isn't bad, hard is just hard. And, and that's really come back to my wife and I in this season as it's difficult, isn't it? Like as, as the support structures of churches we've known have been stripped away from us, it's flipping hard. We have to be real, it's, it's uncomfortable. And for some of us who are pioneers, there's a real excitement to that, but we also have to be pastorally sensitive to recognize for some people it's so unbelievably hard. But here's the thing, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's bad. It's simply just hard. In fact, if we look at what Jesus calls us to as his followers, he calls us to the way of his life. And what is the way of Jesus? The way of Jesus is the way of the cross. And the way of the cross, my goodness, that's not a comfortable way, is it? The way of the cross is uncomfortable. It's dying. Dying is not comfortable. It's painful. It hurts. But I believe that the Lord's actually got us in a season of, it's the vine and the branches again. He's got us in this season of pruning. He doesn't prune us because he dislikes us. He prunes us precisely because he's wanting to position us for increased growth and increased fruitfulness. Um, and that's exactly what I think he's wanting to do with us. And not just as Baptists, I think he's wanting to do it in the church across the West. What a thoroughly exciting time to be alive. You know, ever since Jesus ascended to the Father, we are in the end times. Like, but as we draw even closer towards that time, uh, the world will get darker. We're seeing that, aren't we? We've literally got to the point in the last few weeks where there's, li there's been times where I've said to my wife, I, I don't think I'd be surprised by anything in the headlines tomorrow. There's, I, I honestly can't think of anything that would surprise me in the headlines tomorrow. The world's getting crazier and crazier and darker and darker. But we see Jesus show us that as that happens, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's the weeds and the wheat growing side by side. The world gets darker, but the church gets stronger and stronger and stronger and brighter. And so what exciting times to live in, hey? As we see everything in turmoil around us, just this invitation and this, I think we can genuinely expect of God without a, 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 without a sense of telling God what he should do. I genuinely believe there's this invitation to come in and pound on the door of heaven because it's his heart to say, it's the last days and I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. We, we should be imagining things that we have never seen before, not just seeing what's happened in history in the past, but even greater, greater things than these will you do. Um, Ah, oh, come on, as a Baptist family, let's dream big. Let's run wild. Let's release people. We, we're, the, we're the priesthood of all believers, right? So rather than just trying to find a program to slot a young adult into, my goodness, why don't we ourselves pour everything into pursuing Jesus ourselves until young people flock around us and actually want to emulate who we are? You know, people came to Jesus and the crowds came to him. He didn't try to create crowds. He actually sent the crowd, crowds away at times and made it harder, so he drew out hunger from them. Let's stop trying to create structures and programs that we could persuade people to come into, and let's, let's burn as brightly as we can in Jesus for ourselves. If we put 90% of our energy and our effort into actually our own walk with Jesus, 90% of the stuff that we're trying to do in ministry would happen without us even trying.